Jeez. Who's doing all that money? No, the rule's supposed to be here at 8 30. Nothing urgent, so. That's we have anything to at the moment? Well, <clears throat> in my opinion, I see you copy the any phase letter on the parking. I would say take down the sign and let whoever wants to park over there park and be done with it. Well, as I did start with you, we had before we had this wall, we had had some places right. running around our glass, so to encourage them to park over at different places. But we do have different places now to park you know, on the south side as well as the other side. But uh, I said we can't. Come to park here, but just encourage them to park over their employees and, and like I said, anybody else park at most of us too. That sound pretty good, yeah. The parking lot by the recreation building, yeah. just make it public parking. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, I think it's fine because I got no problem with that at all. But I do think <clears throat> we ought to ask the city to paint, paint the curb blue in front of the annex. No signs or anything, just paint it blue. <clears throat> so I guess we'll just inform Bill to take the sign down for the open season. Well, I, I, I told him so any time there's a parking spot in there, you're welcome to park. I do too, but I don't think that. I don't think that. So we'll just take it out. Well, you know, I, I have an issue with making rules and then saying, oh, but don't, you don't have to follow them. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. You know, I, I think that that's wrong. I, if, if, if we're not going to have the rules that we want to enforce, and let's change that rule. I agree. With you. So let's, yeah, let's make a public parking. Does it, do the courthouse employees de need a designated parking area? We used to, but I guess now we don't. Do you need? You mean you used to because it was limited parking? Well, it used to be we would all park over here next to the bank. Fair around the square. And over, over here in front of Paulson's, Paulson's. And of course, they all complained. Well, where else were we supposed to park? Yeah, we supposed to park. So, so we got, that's why we designated that by the Whitson. Which center. makes sense. And now that's made. Encourage them, but they did. We encouraged the park, but they did. And, and that, that, that cleaned up the front around the courthouse and everything. And it helped people. the bank parking. Well, but also helped people come to the courthouse where they could pull in. They made that so one so hour do we need to make this parking lot, this parking no, lot, and, and behind the annex, the courthouse no. parking? No, I would. Because, you know, our goal was to. Relieve the congestion around the courthouse, right. particularly on Fridays. Right. On court during days. Court days. Yeah, right. So, but, I mean, it's a public street. But they both. And I think most of them most continue to park. The employees really did. They did a good job with that. I believe that we responsibly have we paid over there. They started the parking over there pretty well, and they did. They freed up a lot of parking around the courthouse. Which is yeah, which is nice to come in here and not have to walk a block. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, if you don't think we need a designated area for the employees. Then. I don't. I think we'll still continue to park over there. Mm -hmm. Just just encourage them to park there. Like I said before, we couldn't, we couldn't, couldn't force them to park over there, but they voluntarily went ahead if we put the, got the access to the lot over there. That's what we did. Okay, we'll do that. That doesn't require a motion, does it? Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll recess.
this grant please from my phone. And I've actually found a government contract through Verizon that the monthly fees instead of 115 or 49. But I want to upgrade my phone. So. Is that for what is that like how special is that what? for you? Your your the monthly fee. Forty-nine dollars a month. For for every um, month. Every, for the year contractor. I want to make sure it wasn't one of those things. I've never heard of the government contract. Right? Mm -hmm. So you guys can probably get yours. Out. I mean, you pay for anything. So you might. All I do is stamp the phone. Um, yeah, you can just pay the next day. So you don't have to be prized. I didn't say it was coming. It's just. Hey, take them away. This is a copy of the, of the budget that I just ordered. And this is a copy of Randy's. Quote, and I do not believe that includes an external hard drive that I take off the premises. Right now I back everything up to the thumb drive that I want to keep. But this, I think the external hard drive drive back up everything. And I sent it in already because it just required my signature. So when they get it, they're supposed to send us 25% of the Insurance that pays for it, it will cover it, it has to be private. 
be coming with a medical card or insurer. So you have to keep those in separate containers. The private's on this side and the state's on this side. So if somebody comes in and says they want the good stuff, which it's side do you go to? It's all the same. Same brand, same maker, same everything. There's no difference. Okay, no difference. I don't know if I believe that or not. It's true. I'll show you. You come out. You're usually clear back to back, Roger. You got yeah. there? <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, when I had my Mine would be a live virus is what it would be. When I had one of my girls, I was going to a pediatrician. He said he didn't want me to get the health department's
Well, I guess we can kind of need it. For sure. We, we certainly need it. Yeah. But I guess I'll make a motion. Go ahead and approve it. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And that was the bad news. That wasn't the good news, was it? <laughs> Not as bad. That was bad. Does this need to go to executive session? I or do I even need it? Okay. We'll hold off on that just a second. Uh, just an update on the, the disaster drill up north. We had that uh, Thursday night. Not not a lot of participation, but um, we had 11 people. Uh, but it, it was a good exercise. The uh, Just an update on the um, Ford Escape vehicle. A uh, little trouble on uh, just uh, getting it um, received. It, it'll be another three three weeks before uh, it comes off of the production line. I guess the uh, four-wheel drive feature is, is not one that they, that's not a, uh, a model that they put out much, so we got to just kind of wait till, till they uh, make a run of those, I guess. Uh, I'm going to, there's, there's about three conferences. I, you know, I'm not really in favor of going to a lot of the conferences. You could go to one every week if you wanted to especially uh, covering three disciplines. But they do have a state um, annual one for each one of the disciplines. And those are the ones that I'd really like to concentrate on. The emergency management one um, is coming up in the second week in, in September. The value of that one is uh, uh, they will give us uh, actually an exercise credit, which you have to get three of the exercise, uh, the three exercises in a calendar year to qualify for the emergency management performance grant uh, that's the one that i've uh, that i've put in for and hopefully we'll uh, we'll receive that and we should receive it before the end of september and i'm told that it'll be around ten thousand um, dollars but i know that they're gonna they're really gonna heighten up the requirement for those grants just so they kind of uh, uh, mostly so they uh, so they don't get them taken away they want to they, want to, they know the federal government is going to start putting a squeeze on all the grants, so they want theirs to, to be able to pass the muster up against the ones that are called out. Uh, that will be probably about 100, it's $150 for registration and, and uh, probably about $150 for motel. So it's under the 500 but I just wanted to kind of surprise you with that one. And uh, if I could have an executive session for uh, 10 minutes, this is about now. I'd like to say no. I'll make a motion to go to the executive session for 10 minutes. For now. Like the motion I have for is he coming? 8.30. Who's that? Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's he not out there yet. Oh, is it? I'll second Somebody the motion. Else the motion. <laughs> it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. We're in executive session for 10 minutes. How's the world crying? Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> it's Monday. We just read about it in the paper. See what's coming. <laughs> um, I'm here today. I have two reports that um, require your approval for me to send it into the uh, Department of Corrections. The first I'll go through is the uh, carryover reimbursement plan. And I have, um, there's two budget forms that are attached to this. The first is just a summary. And that tells us our, our carryover reimbursements are what we collected in fiscal year 2011 um, through offender reimbursements for our treatment or our, um, our agency fees. And um, as at each year, we progressively collected a little bit more. This um, specifically is funds our um, counselors uh, salary and benefits. And so it's a pretty short report because we haven't quite, we've got one um, full-time and one um, person that's half-time uh, in a counselor. And she's half-time counselor, half-time uh, supervision officer. And so we don't have quite all of her, uh, her uh, uh, collections that we need, but we haven't had any problems in the past of just collecting in, in the same fiscal year and spending it. But it's required for the 
by the state that we show you exactly what we do with our money. Um, our this is our kind of our extra money that if our grant falls short, for example, maybe our computer crashes, then you know we don't have it in our plan, but we generally have enough money that we can cover that. Um, but that's so it's like a reserve. You've got some money going back. For right. Yeah, we have to uh, collect it in one year, and then we show a plan. One time, I think that was back in like 2000, we had an excess of $100,000 in our reimbursements, but there wasn't a plan for it. And the Department of Corrections was like, sorry, that's not your money. And they came and took it. And so um, we said, we don't do that anymore. We show exactly what we need that money um, and what we're going to do with it. So. If there's any questions, I can answer that. Who do you, get your, who do you get your health insurance from? Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. We're actually considered Barton County employees, so all of our we the our agency just pays what the county would pay. If there's no questions, I'd ask that you approve that from me to submit to the Department of Corrections. Motion. I move that we uh, accept your carryover reimbursement budget. I second the motion. Okay, so we move and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Uh, motion carried. Okay, and then this is our signature page. You can just sign it for staff. Right. If you want them, I can take them. The other uh, report that I completed is the out fiscal year 2011 year-end outcomes report. And this, every year when I submit the um, our comprehensive plan, it send, send, we set goals for ourselves of what we want to accomplish. Um, and then we report out how we did with those each quarter. And then at the year-end, we go come around to the commissions and tell how we're doing. Um, didn't meet our goal as far as revocations are concerned. You'll see on page one of three, um, our target is to be at 20% re revocation. And we were at 30% for the year end. Uh, we had 119 offenders that were discharged from the program. 36 of those went to prison. 83, did, 83 of those did not. Um, there was a lot of things that were going on in last fiscal year. Um, at the start of the, uh, like at Christmas, we had an officer that went out for family medical leave. He was gone for nearly five months. We also had one of our officers, we had already had the plan in the works for transitioning one of our officers to the counselor position. So we were down from that, and then as soon as our person came back from family medical leave, then we had somebody that turned over. And I was, you know, I always say, you know, I was I try to keep my hands in the mix as far as supervision um, is concerned. I normally keep around seven to ten. My case look grew to fifty five, <laughs> and so there was everyone was just in. And here's the here's the outcome of that. You know we didn't have time um, as far as quality assurance to ensure that all assessments. You know we were at ninety percent as far as getting a, uh, assessments completed in a timely manner. Or at, as set out by our goals, um, and those just each quarter just seem like to go down. And same with our case plans. Um, we also are the Department of Corrections changed the way that we do our our case planning and a different screens within our database, which completely wiped out what we had going. So you know, there's just a lot of, of things that were going on that fiscal year that you know. I'm sorry again. There's going to be a fallout when you don't have the staff to um, adequately supervise your offenders. And so, um, not awful, but we've got room for improvement that I expect. We have hired two new staff people, um, and so we're hoping to get them up and, and going as far as the training is concerned, and then um, be well on our way to meet our goals again. So, are there any questions? I'm glad you're doing this. And not <laughs> Sometimes I wish somebody else were too. <laughs> but oh, 
I did have. I had did ask for a guest to come and speak oh. today, so. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'll go ahead and if you have if you don't have any questions, otherwise I'd ask that you uh, approve our report and I'll submit that to the Department of Corrections. I'd like to approve the report. I'll second it. Uh, it's been moved and seconded by Mr. Ray. Activity documentation system. It's our state statewide system. And I don't know why they came up with such a repulsive oh. name. I know, I hate it. <laughs> I don't even say That's that. That's I read that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's important. Um, you know, I asked somebody to come. Leave you on this. Uh, I think it's important for people to understand the constituents that and some of the um, issues that we have to deal with or they deal with, and um, positive outcomes do happen. Um, despite you know not meeting our goals, I think that the changes um, do come in with within the person. So sometimes we help with that. Sometimes they get it on their own. So this isn't a raw raw community corrections kind of a, mm -hmm. a talk. It's just more of um, seeing where people come from. So I asked, um, did I ask you or did I direct you? I don't know how it was. Compromise. <laughs> 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 I think I may have faded in with some community service work hours or something. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> But um, you know, I think I think it is important to, and it's been a couple of years since we brought anyone here, so I wanted to um, find somebody that's you know your homegrown people that you know these they do come back. We want they want to stay invested in the community, and, and it's important. And I know Lee has made some um, some positive changes and is looking to get off supervision soon, right? So I asked him to kind of come and tell us a little bit about his story. Well, Roger might have some insight. I've known each other several years. Uh, I was not that much. Don't get me in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess uh, it started out as just it's been a hard worker my whole life. I had my own business. In fact, the last time I met before the commission was to get approved to uh, have more than three dogs because my wife and I had a racing greyhound operation operating in Stafford County and I was running another business at the same time and somewhere in the mix of running two businesses and I had burning the candle at both ends I got involved in methamphetamines and it took over my life and to the point that I could not now, I love, was no longer making my own decisions. Drugs were making my decisions for me. Led to not only did I lose the Greyhound business, lost my wife and daughter. Uh, she stuck in as long as she could. She finally couldn't. Just for fear of safety for our daughter, I think more than anything, she was no longer able to stick with me. And that was a major blow to me. Therefore, I let go of everything from there. Didn't care, didn't, no longer cared to run the other business that I'd worked so hard to build up. Uh, just became, uh, well, no pun intended, I became a clandestine person because I didn't care to face anybody, didn't care to face the world, uh, which led to my run ins with the law and eventual incarceration and which eventually led me to community corrections. Um, I'm not going to say jail didn't have an effect on me, because it did, a major effect on me, but I know the work with Amy, with Tori, with Charity, who are all three have been involved with me in community corrections. Uh, they not only, and she didn't tell me to say any of this, no. they not only have helped me with my legal issues, I have always felt like 
because I, I'm to the point now where, okay, for example, I mean, I've back, been back to work, uh, back on my feet, I'm paying my fines. Like she said, I'm hopefully about to get released from supervision. Um, big news for me, uh, Labor Day weekend, my wife and daughter, are they, they've moved to Salt Lake City. They're coming back for Labor Day weekend. Get to see them for the first time in six years. Um, my life was here, it went to here, and it's back up to here, for sure. And part of that, I know, is because uh, these girls not only helped me through, you know, through the court systems, through jail, I always felt like I could go in and talk to them about personal stuff. And I've probably been in to talk to Tori, who was my original officer, she, I switched to, to charity now. I've been in as many times to talk to her about a personal issue as I have because I had to be there. Uh, she, in fact, uh, I remember what the original letter I wrote to my wife, my ex-wife, I keep calling her wife, uh, ex-wife, uh, I went in to have Tori look at it because she'd been really on me to do this. She wasn't just on me to meet the obligations legally, she was on me to meet personal obligations. And I know part of that was because I was doing everything right on the legal side. But she she definitely was a, a major push to get me to get back in contact with my wife. I did. Uh, took the original letter I wrote to uh, Susan, which is my ex-wife, and I read it to Tori. And you know you've got a personal connection when you read a letter to your corrections officer and she gets tears in her eyes. So these girls have made me feel as much as I was there for personal reasons as I was for obligations. And I really appreciate that. And they helped me. And I know the reason maybe we had the relationship we did is because I wasn't getting in more trouble. I wasn't having, uh, you know, bad UAs. I, I was showing up for all my meetings. I was paying my fines. And I know that they have to handle different cases differently, but. From my point of view, uh, they couldn't have done anything any better than what they did. Amy's a little rough on me at times, and I think it's just because she wants to make people think she's mean, but she's really not at heart. So, uh, If there is a case of success as far as community corrections and just uh, if you don't think that people can come back from the position I was in, you're wrong because it can be done, and uh, I do owe a great thanks to community corrections for it. And I was, she did bait me with some community service hours, but had she just asked me outright, I probably would have done it. Anyway. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm kidding. You say that now. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. 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 You know, everyone's story looks different, and just because where you are, or what you read in the paper, doesn't mean that's where you are forever. That's right. And so and that's kind of what we need to remember. And granted, I had a family and a job to go back to, and that's that is a big thing. I I see that all the time, and I'm sure Amy will back me up on this. Um, but I I, I think I would be, say, I was in a handful that, that are able to come back from it, but uh, once again, like I say, I couldn't have done it without them, and I wouldn't have cared to, and I uh, don't know what to say, so I'll let her take it from here. All right, thanks. <laughs> yep. But I think, again, it's speaking, you know, when we talk about what we do those assessments and we want to see, you know, what are their high risk factors, this time, when I, when I developed the the new plan for this fiscal year, kind of looked at what is it that the person looks like that is successful? And um, how do we bait, bait, not bait them, but how do we get them to, to share the same goals? You know, they have um, a family supports, they've got uh, their drug and alcohol under control, they've got their mental health needs under control, they've got a job that they're really invested in, and um, and just managing their finances because those things can cause you so much stress. I mean, who hasn't gone through those? I mean, you know, those, those things, jobs and families can be the, or jobs and finances can be the number one reason for divorce. So it's also the number one reason for relapse and all of, and all of those things. So really trying to deal with what the issue is 
that um, got you into the place and, and what are you motivated by? You know, it sounds like with Tori, she knew that, you know, family was going to be a main thing. That He probably didn't get some either closure or be able to say his piece on that, that that's going to continue to bring him down and probably is the reason why she was really targeting on that. So I think that our officers are, are good and that they understand that the needs are bigger than just what's on the, you know, you're not going to change because somebody in a rope told you you had to. Right. <laughs> kind of an issue. So it helps <laughs> to have somebody, but, you know, it, it's definitely, uh, it goes deeper than that, so. But anyway, that's kind of yeah. that for today, uh, yeah. so it's thank nice you. Too, yeah, it is. It is nice. Now I need to make sure, I can't find, it's definitely positive. Sure. Did I give you, or did I get the uh, year and outcomes signature page, or what did I do with that? Okay, well, I'll see you next time. Okay. So Bring us nice. more good news. I will. <laughs> we'll work on that. And luckily, you leave. Take care. You too. See you later. Have you talked to Chris? Uh, yeah, he's in Russia right now. Do you know that? Well, I knew he was going. I, <laughs> I, I, All right, see you later. Poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah. Carolyn? Do you have anything? Nothing like her. Official business, but I just we have an appointment on Thursday. I just want to make sure. Really? You know. Well, that's a good thing you said. We, <laughs> meaning they're invited too, right? Well, yeah. We're gonna, mm -hmm. which we talked about. Yeah. Go we'll talk to Golden Bell and see what. I don't know. We're just gonna be pay a, pay a friendly visit, basically, and see what's in their heads. But from what you've learned, it's not very encouraging. Um, from an economic development standpoint, unless they've got plans that will either expand camp capital um, investment or job creation, I don't see much of an economic development angle. That's just a simple transportation maintenance thing. And is there any funds in that regard available? I don't think so. I mean, the, the transportation, well, yeah. I think it's, funding. it's just a standard local issue. Which isn't what you want to hear, I know. No, not at all. Um, he, uh, well, we can talk about it. Well, I'll be there because I'm not going to be in there. He had called one day last week with the request of closing the road. I wasn't in the office and played phone tag with him. We haven't talked directly since then, but he was concerned about this, the, the, I don't know state of the road, I guess. They were getting stuck and he was wanting to just close it, so. He called you with that? That's. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? No. I know, I know. That's what I want. So did you give him, give him authority to close the road? <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> That's interesting. I know, so we'll have to make sure that it's Expectations are realistic about what we can and can't do, I guess. Or what? Very high. Um... Okay. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. The only way we're going to build a road is to create a new tax. I wonder what happened to Mr. Foot. I don't think my head tax is a good idea. Recess. And as soon as you have it on, we'll recess now for uh, the public hearing on our 2012 budget.